time for my five in five, in which I attempt to review five graphic novels in five minutes. The links to all of them as well as descriptions are below. I think that's all you need to know, so here we go. In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. Positives and negatives for me on this one. I like the art, which is sort of cutesy and muted, and I like the personality that injects. I really like the intermingling of what's going on in real life in Andra's world combined with what's going on in the game, and I like how it tackles some issues that maybe people don't think about or don't even realize are issues. However, on that same note, I think some people will probably feel like it suffers a little bit from a savior complex. That doesn't bother me too much in this because I feel like it is sort of appropriate to the story and to what it's representing, and even kind of approaches that idea of trying to be the savior and maybe muddling some things up in the process and not really understanding your place in this or whether it is even your place to interfere. I can see why it would have its detractors. That didn't bother me too much. I grew to like it more as it went on, and I mostly just really liked seeing the role-playing game brought to life. I thought that was really fun. Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, which is a collection of illustrated short stories, reminded me very much of the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark series by Elvin Schwartz, which was a huge favorite of mine when I was a kid, also sort of reminiscent of the Are You Afraid of the Dark stories, things that are predictably unpredictable. You know there's going to be a twist and you might even know what the twist is going to be and how it's executed I guess is what's going to determine how much you like it. There were some stories that I really liked, some stories that were kind of misses for me. There is a decided lack of resolution to most of them if not all of them so if that bothers you you probably are going to want to just skip this one. I think I would have loved this as a kid and it would have been great to kind of torture myself or my friends with by reading before bed, you know, scary stories to tell in the dark. And the art is fabulous, but mostly I was kind of left feeling a little wanting. I wanted a little something more. I couldn't tell you what it was, maybe just the fact that it felt so reminiscent. I felt like it was ground that had been covered, but that said, still really enjoyable. Weird and quirky and dark, and I like all of those things. Sorry. Apparently Merlot needed to come out because she wouldn't stop making noise, so we're just gonna have a friend for a minute. Hope it's not too distracting, but anyway. Amy Unbounded, Blonde Egg Blossoming by Rachel Hartman. Of course, it's a given that I'm gonna like anything that expands the world of Serafina and Gored because I love Serafina and this is well known. And it does that nicely. There are some familiar characters in this, which I wasn't expecting as it was written quite a bit before Serafina was published. It definitely overlaps. It lays the groundwork. You can see how Hartman is developing this world and it kind of adds to the overall appreciation of the story. I would just kind of smile delightedly every time someone that I knew popped into the story, but even without them it was still really enjoyable. I loved Amy and her spirit, this sort of charming humor and slice of life thing that it has going on. And as simple and sweet as it can seem, it actually does tackle weightier things that are done in a nice unobtrusive way. And in that respect, it reminded me of Linda Medley, who actually wrote the foreword to this. It reminded me of Castle Waiting, which is a huge compliment because I love me some Castle Waiting, and we already know this. The Wrenchies by Feral Del Rumpel. What even is this? I have a feeling that this is not going to be many people's cup of tea, and it wasn't mine. I can see where people would appreciate it, but for me it just didn't work on a number of levels. Mostly it just seemed like gross out factor and shock value for gross out factor and shock value's sake. I don't like when I feel like something is for effect more than it's for the story. And I also didn't like that it takes a really long time to get to a place where what is actually going on is even addressed. I don't mind stories that begin abruptly and just plunge you into the world, but for a while you're just kind of left dangling wondering what is even going on and why do I care? Weirdly, it reminded me a lot of Garbage Pail Kids. If you guys remember those, the art is very reminiscent partially in the gross out factor, but also just in the style. It's strangely muted and kind of pastel, very soft for such a gross story, and it is gross. That's just the overwhelming theme of it. It's just blech. And lastly, going for something totally different than that, the Stratford Zoo Midnight Review presents Macbeth by Ian Lendler and Zach Gialongo. This is just full of adorbs. I hope it's going to be a whole series covering many of Shakespeare's works. Probably not all, because it might get a little iffy. This was just done so well. I think it has a lot of in-jokes for fans of Shakespeare and people that are familiar with Macbeth, 
but it's also something that would work completely fine even if you're not familiar with it. I think you would still be able to fully understand this and appreciate the humor and the quirkiness of it. The art is fantastic and full of personality and I was just left with the sort of overall feeling of how clever it was. It's just darling. So that is five and five. Hopefully I nailed it. After editing out all of the dealing with this little jackass. And now that I'm all <laughs> scratched up and look like I've maybe went through the post-apocalyptic world of the Wrenchies, I think we'll go ahead and call this one quits here. Thanks for watching. Happy reading. Why? You're a little asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>